Hey, how's it going everyone? So today we're gonna to be doing kind of like a mid-month look at my investing portfolio so we can see how everything is doing, uh, talk about some of the things that I wanna do with this portfolio and kind of some of the goals that I'm trying to aim with this. Now, if you haven't been following along and this is maybe your first one, uh, I have a couple different investment portfolios. I got a retirement with Vanguard, I got kind of like a growth fund focused with uh, Robinhood and then I have a dividend uh, growth fund with M1 Finance. So I got a couple different portfolios. My main focus right now is with M1 Finance and my initial goal was to actually try to get $1,000 within the first uh, year of actually having the investment platform. Now, I know that's not a lot of money, but for you know some people that can be quite a bit and to show people that, hey, if you just invest a little bit every single month, you can hit those big goals and actually be able to reach a large dollar amount in your portfolio. So now that I hit that goal um, since last month, which was really awesome, uh, I wanna now go ahead and kind of take it to that next step. So I've seen a lot of people who do like Robin Hood challenges, which is really awesome. I want to kind of do that same thing with M1 Finance where I kind of have a challenge kind of for myself but also for you guys to you know kind of see this and see it going in real time so this is going to be a $10,000 uh, M1 Finance challenge so I want to try to get to $10,000 as quickly as possible uh, by you know constantly investing into the actual market making sure that I pick the right funds to be invested in so that way they grow now of course being that you know we're in currently 2020 so things can always be changing I know a lot of people get really worried about the market going down but I want to be here whether the market is going up or down so I want to show you guys that you shouldn't care if the market is dipping 20% you should still be buying into the stock market I know there might be some other channels out there that will stop showcasing their platforms or their overall portfolio I should say because it might be down by 20% but I'm not gonna be shy to share that with you guys so every single week I am still gonna be investing so I want to make sure that every month that a couple of times I am showing you guys my portfolio how it's doing I usually like to show you guys how much I make um, at the end of a month with dividends because I always find that really fun and exciting to you know be sharing with you guys so if we look at my M1 finance portfolio right now I am currently sitting at uh, one thousand five hundred and ninety three dollars and eighty three cents which is freaking awesome so um, the reason I wanted to show it this way is right now with M1 on my one day, which is ending on the 15th of February. So uh, hopefully just a few days after you guys are watching this. Um, right now I had a gain of $4.07 with 0.26 uh, you know, return for the one day. But if we go to the week, which starts getting a little bit more important, uh, we actually had a gain of 1.29%, which is almost $20. So if we look at this, um, you know, a little bit was dividends. Most of that was market gains. So that was a nice week. And then if we look at the month, um, you kind of see some weird stuff going on here in the overall month. And the reason for that is because if you were paying attention to Tesla or heard about Tesla, they had like a crazy spike in just a short amount of time. And for somebody who is a big fan of Tesla, I didn't want to be fully out of it, but I also wanted to make sure that if that dropped pretty significantly, that I was able to get some of the gains at the top and then kind of rebuy into them at a lower cost, which is essentially what I did. So I sold, um, you know, all of Tesla at one point, and then uh, for a few days, which was the weekend, I was kind of, you know, debating on what I should do, reinvested, and then got back into a little bit of Tesla, and then put the rest back into my overall portfolio. Um, so that's why I have that like nice little dip there. So it wasn't like a loss or anything. It was essentially me selling off and then rebuying. Uh, but for that uh, month, I'm actually right now up 5.84%. And then my total gains are $80.81. Um, right now, of course, it's still a majority of the gains being from the market. No, nothing really from dividends for the most part, just about $1.69. And then if we go over to the quarter, um, you're going to see this quarter was fantastic. We've had a growth right now return of 13.50%, uh, total gains of $154.03. So you can see here back in November, uh, on November 18, 2019, I had $911.48. And again, now we're sitting up there at the almost $1,600. Um, if we go to the one-year marker, uh, we're actually a total gain of 215 bucks, which is really, really nice to see. Uh, total returns of 48.14. I think just overall, I think my overall returns is around 11. We'll, we'll check that in a bit. And then if we go to the all, it's only been like two weeks after um, I actually started this account from the full year. Um, but we have a total gains of $220, which is a 52.95 return. So that is pretty awesome to see. Um, and you can see here all the little uh, bump ups here. And then every once in a while, I see nice little jumps. And that's when I had a little extra money to put in. But I was investing every single week. So this is just showing you the power of consistently investing. And, you know, I wouldn't have this extra $220 if I didn't start, you know, a year and some change ago. And 
Again, I know for some people, $10, $20, $30, even $40 a week is not a lot to be investing with um, as there's people out there putting a lot more, but I think it one helps other people out there that if you are investing even small amounts, it can really be beneficial for you. And I think you get really encouraged to start learning more, get excited and actually continue to be investing. Cause if you put like $500 in and you know, maybe your money's going up and down and you're not understanding, that's tough. But if you do $100 at first and then maybe like $10 a week, you're gonna start really understanding how the market's working. Um, and I think it really works out for most people. Now here's personally one of my favorite things about M1 Finance. So I have my overall pie here, as you can see, and I have it into different sectors. So I have one portion of my overall portfolio be in the Vanguard S&P 500, which is an ETF. And that is essentially just a bunch of companies put together, um, which I know to some people might not seem very logical when I'm building up my own portfolio, but I still like a little bit of security in there because I don't have all the risk that I would like to have um, like some people do. So I have that right there. It's about 25% of my portfolio. I have a tech sector. I have a retail sector. Um, I have real estate, uh, consumer products, health, finances and industries as well. Maybe one day I'll go through and I'll show you guys all of my portfolio. Um, I do switch things out from time to time, of course, as well. Um, and I'll kind of go over some of that stuff here too. Um, but this is the thing, again, that I love so much about uh, M1 Finance. So if I go into individual sectors, I can see how the performance of that sector is doing in those groups of months, uh, weeks, or quarters, as well as the overall portfolio. And what that does is it gives me some really great insights to understand, okay, where are my you know winners and where are my losers? Now, of course, you can also see that individually, but I like to see them in the groups that I set them in. So in my tech right here, I can see that in the last week, it's gone up by 0.65. In the month, it's gone up 2.49. And then in the last quarter, this whole setup here has gone up by 10.87%. And in the last year, about 27.89%. So you can see the things that I'm invested in, such as Microsoft, AT&T, Apple, Verizon, all these companies. Um, and that's kind of what is leading me here. And the nice thing is as well, is when I switch between the like one month and then the quarter, you can see the total gains switching over here based off of those time frames. So that's a really cool feature. I personally like that. Um, so that way I can go in and I can see like right now my finance, actually my, yeah, where is it? If I go to my all time, uh, my finances are actually, my financial sector, I should say, is actually down by 2.02%. So I understand that, hey, some of the things that I'm invested in right now are hurting me uh, versus helping me grow my portfolio. So I actually readjusted some of the companies I'm invested in because they're not doing as well versus adding some other companies in. So I recently added Visa here in my portfolio. So since I've added it, which hasn't been in for very long, it's already gone up almost 5% into this actual sector. Um, as you can see, I have like Discover is actually down about 7%. I think this is in the all time, let me check. Yeah, it's an all time. So so yeah, I have a, uh, three different companies that are bringing my portfolio down altogether in this sector. So it's actually still not in the positive, but it did again, let me readjust things in the fly and understand like, hey, where are my weak points in my overall portfolio? So that's something I personally like um, in this overall sector. I mean, this is not like an M1 finance review. I have plenty of those on the channel, but what we're gonna do is um, actually go through and kind of see some of the different activities that I've done kind of recently. I mentioned a little bit about the Tesla uh, buying and selling uh, situation, which I did more recently as well. So if I actually slide around here, I gotta make sure that it is on my screen. So if I scroll down far enough, where are you? Okay, so right over here. So I sold um, in the morning with Tesla. I'm at $132.55. And then here I was doing my weekly $40 deposit. So then I bought back into a bunch of companies as well as Tesla for $172.29. So you can see all the companies that I invested back into. So those are the uh, different ways that I kind of, you know, do uh, different bids here on, uh, on M1 Finance. Now I also do a lot of purchases as well. So let me actually switch this up because the way my screen is set up, the way my checking the savings works, let's do trading. All right, that makes it a little easier here. So we can see here that uh, these are all my trades. So uh, pretty much once a week is when I'm doing my deposit. And then uh, you can see here at one point it was like $30 a week. Uh, sometimes it jumps up a little bit depending on if I got like gifts or if I had a little extra money, um, I'll do some extra deposits. Uh, usually like once a month, I'll have a little extra. 
and then they do the purchases so I can always go in here and see you know this time around I put in 40 bucks I had a little bit of extra money in my overall funds and then this is where all of my money got split up into which was really nice to see um, I know sometimes people kind of make fun of the fact that you know 70 cents goes into AT&T and 14 cents into uh, Lockheed Martin so that's obviously not a lot like you can see here this is such a small amount of actual shares that I bought into uh, Lockheed Martin but what I love about this is that over time, I saw having more ownership into these companies. And that was actually um, a question that somebody came up and asked in the comments in one of my videos, which I love answering those for you guys. So if you have comments, let me know in the comments section down below. And while you're down there, make sure you guys hit that like button too, because those, uh, those likes really help the YouTube algorithm, of course. So that way I can continue to grow and other people can find this channel and join in on the journey. So the question that I had come up was actually from a gentleman called Bill Lee. And he asked this great question and said, can a fractional share become a whole share if I keep adding money into my fractional share? And the answer for that is easily a yes. Um, but I wanna show people kind of what that really entails because when you buy into these companies, so like I said, with fractional shares, like if I go in here, I'm buying into like Cisco for 16 cents, uh, 3M for 56 cents. And the reason for that is because I have about 51 funds that I'm investing in. So when I'm only putting in 30, 40, 50 bucks, it's not breaking it apart very well. Um, obviously, as I increase the amount of money I'm putting in, then it's gonna be dispersed a little bit nicer. But this is the thing that I love about it the most is that I can, yes, buy into these companies at small fractions. And then over time, I can actually buy into a full share. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you with at and I'm gonna show you guys here. So uh, let's see how far back I can go. So at and I can go all the way as far back. Again, I just gotta make sure it's on the screen here. I can go all the way back from June 12th of 2019. This is the first time I bought into at and Now I bought the first set at $9.37 is what I put in. And it bought me about uh, 0.29, so about 29% of one share. And then after that, you can see here, it started doing smaller amounts. And the only reason I had a big chunk at first was because it was a brand new stock in my portfolio and I didn't have that many different companies to be investing in. So a lot more of it went into the to just this one. So then over the uh, coming weeks and months, you can just see, you know, 21 cents, 14 cents, a dollar and 13 cents dollar and 2019 cents not a lot of money going into these uh into this fund uh but you can see here it's gonna get cut off at the bottom but again just small amounts um here and there you know a little bit here a little bit there um i put you know 40 cents in here which bought 0 0.01066 which is like one percent of a share but now because i've been buying into them for so long can flip this around here you can see here with AT&T I actually own 1.54164 shares of at and in total I have a total gain of about 4.37 uh, percent which is not fantastic but they're not really all about growth or definitely with the dividend payouts but that right there is giving me the opportunity to have a full share and then some of course with this company because I'm buying into those small pieces versus having to pay that full amount now at t doesn't have a you know, large dollar amount that I need to be depositing money into. So it's, you know, it's easy to buy one share into them. But then when you have other companies that are, you know, a couple hundred dollars, maybe even thousands of dollars, it makes it really tough to buy one share because one, that's a lot of money. And then two, that is really shrinking your overall portfolio to have so much of your money invested into one company. So that's my favorite thing about fractional sharing. And that's why I love M1 Finance. And I'm excited for Robinhood to finally be getting it here in the next couple months. But yeah, I can be buying into these companies. So I have like a couple of companies that I have at least one full share and then everything else is less than one share because again, little by little, it's going in there. And over time, my plan is to be depositing more every single month. So I should be having more being able to disperse between these companies. So it's not like just pennies here and there. So that's, that's a big thing for me personally. Um, and I'm excited for that. So that way I can continue to grow the portfolio, continue to grow ownership in these companies that I have and not have to wait till, uh, till I have a full amount of money to be able to buy one share in those companies. Cause I'm going to miss out the opportunity of all that growth and all those dividends. Cause here's a really cool thing too. If I go back in here, if I go to dividends only just for at and I've only gotten paid out three times from them since I started investing, but check this out. On August 1st, I got paid 17 cents. November 1st, I got paid out 29 cents. And then on February 3rd, I got paid out 61 cents. So 
That is money that if I hadn't been investing in them already and putting small dollar amounts in there every single week or month, however often it gets put in, I wouldn't get those dividends. So something to always consider, that's that's one of the other great factors about this is I get my fractional dividends on top of having fractional ownership in the companies because I get the growth and I get the dividends for being invested in these companies. And like I mentioned, there are companies out there that are in the thousands, like you guys might've heard of Amazon. So with Amazon as an example, if I go into uh, into my portfolio here, I actually have some ownership in Amazon and I am up $22. I'm actually up 22.49% on my overall investment, which is only $1.65, so it's not a lot of money, but that's a big percentage because I was able to invest in the company. Now, if you're not familiar with where uh, Amazon st stands right now, they're at $2,134.87 to buy one share into that company. So for most people, that's really unfeasible to be able to buy one share. And again, even if you could buy one share, that might be a huge chunk of your portfolio and that's really risky. So I'm really happy about fractional shares because I can buy into these companies at such small increments that I can still have my money growing for me. So you can see here, um, I originally put in $14.78. So now I have a little bit more value in my money because I was able to invest in Amazon at a much easier price point than that $2,134. So we're gonna go back here onto the main part of the portfolio. Like I said, I, over time, will probably go through and show you guys more of the full shares that I have because I have 51 different companies. I don't wanna bore you guys with going over each one individually. Um, so sometime in the future, I will kind of do something like that, uh, depending on what people want and what they're excited for in the overall portfolio. Like I mentioned before, I do a monthly video talking about how much I earn in dividends because I love sharing about that. So I mentioned earlier that I sold and then bought back into Tesla. Um, if you've been following the channel for a while, Tesla was actually in my retail stock um, sector and I actually moved them over to my tech um, just because I feel like they're obviously more of a tech company. They do obviously sell their cars to people so they are retail as well. But I decided to move them into the actual um, tech pie. I'm like super out of focus right there. So my tech pie, so now they're back in here and I bought them back in with about 20 bucks. Uh, they're already up by a dollar uh, or by 37 cents, up by 1.7%. Um, and I just wanted to get back into them in small increments and then get reinvested overall. Cause like I said, I still believe in the company. It's just the way that their stock skyrocketed in such a short amount of time. Um, I, I knew it was gonna have some type of dip uh, temporarily, which I'm not really big into buying and selling um, in such short periods of time. I'm normally buy and hold for very long term. So you're not going to see that very often here on the channel where I am buying something and then selling it. I might do that on Robinhood once they start bringing out fractional shares with um, the ability to buy into different companies. So I might do that um, in the future with Robinhood, but with uh, M1 Finance, it is really to build up a portfolio uh, to have dividends coming in. Like I mentioned, I want to get to $10,000. I think that's going to be a great M1 Finance challenge. Um, and then I have a goal for myself to be able to start earning dividends from this portfolio where it's going to be good chunks of money. So that way, maybe in like 10 years, I can be living off of the dividends if I so chose to. Whether I do that or not is dependent on where I feel like I want to be. But the nice thing is, I mean, in order to do that, I got to keep on focusing and doing that. I'm sharing my journey with you guys, and I hope that it helps you guys get excited about investing in your portfolio. So if you guys have an M1 Finance uh, portfolio and you're not, you know, putting in as much as you probably should be, like, go in and start depositing more money into your account, whether it's 10 bucks a week, so that way you can really start having the impact, whether it's 100 bucks a month, whatever you can actually do, um, start doing that because honestly, it's, it's gonna be the only way you can grow your money is by actually having it invested. So I actually wanted to show you guys too my upcoming trades that are coming in on Monday. I usually have my money coming in um, but I guess, yeah, Monday is actually President's Day. So um, Tuesday is when this money is gonna officially go in and it will get deposited, deposited into the overall account. Good chunk of it, of course, is going into the S&P 500 there. I got Johnson & Johnson, Microsoft, AT&T, Target, and Amazon, and even Pfizer. Those are gonna be some of the biggest, uh, you know, uh, ones that are earning some of that deposit there. And then and then we even have some companies here towards the bottom, uh, they're earning like 21 cents, 41 cents, and then some of the ones that are cut off towards the very, very bottom are earning like four and five cents. But like we talked about earlier, that is still very beneficial because every little bit is gonna count. It's gonna have a huge impact. I mean, there's people that spend way more money on other things than, you know, 25 cents or 21 cents into, you know, going into Texas Instruments or 
you know, 50 cents going into Google, like that money is going to give me much higher returns than it just sitting on my counter if I had 25 to 50 cents sitting around. Um, so that's what I like about it. I'm uh, excited. I can't wait for uh, for Tuesday to roll around. I, I actually get really excited for Mondays when my money gets deposited in and then I get to see yeah, go entirely through my overall portfolio and how it gets dispersed. Now, if you are also an M1 Finance user and maybe have some questions or curious on how to actually utilize this platform a little bit better, check out my playlist right over here. I've been using M1 for a year, so if you have questions, leave them in any of the comments in those videos and I will do my best to help you guys out. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.